Hello everyone, this is Chris with Seeker Fab. I hope this video finds you well, whatever time of the day it is. We are at our office in North Fort Myers and here is our 2023 Ford Bronco Raptor. We did take it off-roading. We did go to Wind Rock Super Celebration East. We had a great time. A customer asked us to do some PPF on this rear tailgate. Now, what I don't like about this compared to the our Rubicon 392 is the Rubicon 392 pretty much has a plastic piece that goes all across the back so everything is just bumping into that whereas we have exposed metal here of course there are some accessories you can get to cover up this area but the customer wanted to know if we could do PPF along the bottom edge you can see where the rubber kind of hits down here and then you can see where this new OEM Ford floor mat some of them don't go as far as this one, but this one has kind of slid around just a little bit. We have one in our Badlands that goes to right about there, and we have ledge protection for this. But this goes over that plastic bit right there. However, it does touch the paint. So what's funny is, well, maybe not so funny because this is a Ford Bronco Raptor and they're going for over MSRP these days. You can see right there, there's orange paint transfer. And that orange is from this rear tailgate. So we're going to make something that covers basically this bottom half up in here. We'll work on some other ones later, but that is the area that is uh, the problem right now when you have these floor mats that go all the way to the edge. They can tend to slide, especially if you have, let's say, Morimoto headlight and another Morimoto headlight in there, just moving this around. Anytime you have heavy objects in the back and this winds up sliding back from normal use, a lot of people use this as their daily drivers. I use it as my daily driver. So you will start to get paint transfer and just nicks from anything that gets dirty in here. Like I said, we went off-roading. You can see all that dirt right there and that dirt naturally gets on this as well. So I'm gonna make a template. I'm gonna cut it out and then we're gonna come back here and we're gonna show you how to install it. All right, so it's 81 degrees right now. You really wanna do these installations in like 75 to 85 degree weather. If it's kind of any hotter than that, kind of keep this in the shade. Basically, you want the material to react in a certain manner, and when it's cold, it kind of becomes brittle. It doesn't really move well. We have done this template like three or four times just to get the right size. So I'm gonna take the last template that I did off. It's only been on there for like 10 minutes or it wouldn't come off this easily. This is normal PPF material. So you can see kind of the area that it went into. All right, now you wanna have really clean hands because you don't want your fingerprints, any dirt, dust, or whatever, to transfer onto the back of the PPF because that will be visible on your insole. Uh, we have Sikrafab fluid and we have a felt tip squeegee. Um, this prevents you from scarring the PPF when you install it. If you see any marks that are left behind, that's probably the adhesive that's deep in this. So you can actually clean that off, but don't worry about it. It's not gonna damage the material. What I am going to do is spray my fingers down. That reduces the amount of oil that can be transferred onto the back of the PPF. And I'm gonna spray down my install area. I'm gonna be pretty liberal with that. You can also use it to clean the area. Let me give it another wipe, even though we've cleaned it down quite a few times. You just don't want wax, ceramic coating, or anything to be in there because you want it to adhere to this. All right, now we have this huge piece of PPF. I'm gonna start on this side, peeling it back. Let me spray my fingers again. And there's a light breeze. I'm gonna spray the back of it. Um, if you spray this really well, it won't stick on itself, even if it catches wind. So you can still do a one person install. I'm gonna allow it to fold back because it's so wet. I'm not worried about it sticking to itself. Just peeling back and spraying. I'm 
Now we've gotten to the end. I'm going to put this away because it has another small piece in it. I'm going to spray the contact area down again once more. Alright, so we're installing this area first on the right side. Kind of folding this, getting it to a length I can manage. One of the reasons I do it like this is because we have this big U right here and that's easy to line up with. I'm going to gently install it first. Because it's so wet, we'll be able to realign this later. I'm not going to push down really. Just going to make sure it doesn't fall off. I'm going to go place this part down. I might spray a little bit more. This stuff does evaporate pretty quickly, uh, which is more good than bad, honestly. If you had soapy water, it tends to stay soapy for a really long time. We just want it to be able to move around while we try to align it, and after that, we want it to dry up. We don't have to want to worry about it not adhering. Um, so if you're happy with your alignment, start using your squeegee and pushing out that water and air. And on the corners, you might have to push down with your fingers. I do recommend pushing down like this versus going along the edge. Sometimes when you go along the edge, it can bundle up. Once it's already down, see how it bundled up? That's why we go outwards. So some of it will go up, some of it will go down. You just want to get all the bubbles out. When you clean this area, clean all around it because there'll be dirt all up in the bottom part where you're trying to hold on to it with your fingers. Especially try to get around these little rivets. Push them up or push them down. Just try to get those bubbles out. All the liquid will kind of settle at the bottom. We'll kind of finish that up last. You can see I've cut this little indentation here so this can lay flat along the curve. I'm just going to use my thumb, stretch the PPF. The more pressure you put, the more time you spend in an area, the more likely it is to stick. So the sooner you can protect this area, the less likely you will get damage on your paint. If you have gotten damage on your paint, like me, this vehicle is only like a couple months old, there's nicks everywhere because of that mat 
that pushed into it in the cargo area. You can get some touch-up paint, fill that in, and then do your PPF. You can feel all of that sticker fab fluid kind of bundling up down here. So you've got to just push it out. Over time, that fluid will kind of dry out. So if it's too wet to get the PPF to stick right now, come back in a couple minutes, and then push it down again. And then I'm gonna take the small portion, I'm gonna install it right here. I noticed I had a nick right here. So I decided to add a piece for that. This pointy edge goes towards the left. So it pretty much runs parallel with this. That part is a super, super easy install. Small, manageable area. Look at the rest of your insulation. Go back, try to improve on it. Over time, this fluid will dry out of some of these spots as well. Just get as much out as you can manually. Once it's been stretched out this way, you'll start to see me going along the seam a lot more. Once it's pretty much down, or you'll see me start to push it diagonally. So there you have it, great little insulation, great little peace of mind. Only takes you a few minutes after work, at lunch, on the weekend, and you can have this whole lower area protected. So for more items, please check out our website. Please like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not, and hit that bell notification icon for the latest and greatest things we're coming out with for the 2021 and up for Bronco.